But of course, tell me where you at, your motivation guy is back, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen, your number one fan. That's right, man. I am your number one fan, so keep going, keep grinding, never give up on your dreams. Set your goals high. Stop aiming so low. Hey, shoot for the stars. Nothing is impossible if you believe. Hey, if you haven't already figured it out, peace control is one of, if not the biggest skill gaps in all of Fortnite. And while many of you guys out there have managed to get the core fundamentals down, there's just still plenty of mistakes that you guys are making that are seriously hindering your progression as a player. So in today's video, we're going to be going over 11 of the most common peace control mistakes and how to fix them. Yo, you better watch this video all the way through. It's going to take it to the next level, but it's time for our tradition. It's time to sit back, relax, and get some of my favorite candy. What does that y'all say with me? It's that bunch of crunch. Yo, and let's get this going. All right, so the first mistake that we've been seeing a ton of you guys make is not taking advantage of your movement. And so while it tends to be overlooked by many players, your movement is one of the most important factors when it comes to being successful with peace control. Having solid movement is what's going to allow you to claim pieces at awkward angles before your opponent can, as well as position yourself at a protected angle to really avoid taking damage when you go for your shot. And so if you haven't already set up just you know, double movement settings for yourself, then take this as your sign to do so like right now. It's completely unbannable and it's gonna only take you a few minutes to really set it up. Check out the tutorial on our channel and you're gonna be piecing up your opponents in no time. So similar to having poor movement, we see a lot of players awkwardly just jumping in their fights when trying to lay down peace control. And so while it may seem like jumping will increase the reach of your cones and ramps, it really doesn't. Unless you're jumping up to place a cone of your enemy who's a few layers up, jumping is only going to hinder your movement. If you position your crosshair at the right angle, cones and ramps are going to be able to reach just as far. So we understand that a lot of you guys aren't intentionally jumping and are just doing it out of instinct, but you should really work on staying on your feet when you should. Like it's going to make your peace control play so much smoother and it's going to avoid unnecessary jumping jump fatigue. All right, so just like we mentioned in our previous tip, cones can be placed from a far away place when you have proper crosshair placement. As many of you guys know, cones are by far the furthest reaching building piece. This means that you should be taking full advantage of them when trying to peace control your opponents. The best way to do this, guys, is by placing cones over your wall. This is one of the most efficient ways to lay down peace control and will definitely catch your opponents off guard. Just simply hold your cone piece out with your crosshair position just a smidge above your wall. This will cause the cone to place on the opposite side from where you are standing and will open up countless peace control opportunities when utilized correctly. Another common mistake that we've been seeing from you guys is using ramps instead of cones in your box fights. I mean, sure, ramps definitely have their purpose when going for certain box fight plays, but for the majority of the time, guys, cones are more optimal. Okay, so a great example of this is when going for a wall replays on an opponent's box. Many players are still just going for the Mongro Classics as their go-to. Yes, these still can work, but they don't work nearly as well as cones do. Placing a ramp in the opponent's box, editing, and just going for a shot used to work well back in the day when we had hard-hitting shotguns and just more, you know, oblivious players. But today's players are just starting to learn counters to this play and will oftentimes just return damage when you do this. So instead, you should be placing a cone in the box, going for a shot at protected angle and resetting. This play has higher chances of being successful and it's gonna avoid those annoying situations where your opponent is protected by your half-edited ramp. All right, bunch of good time, it's time for the question of the day. How many arena points are you currently at after the point reset have you guys already climbed your way to the champions league be honest let us know in the comments all right, it seems to be a common belief among players that fully peace controlling an opponent is the only time to take a shot. Although you've definitely seen your favorite pros full boxing their opponents and then quickly killing them, not every play has to be like this. You know, a solid amount of successful peace control plays just stem from just claiming only two or three pieces around the opponent. Something like catching a player with a cone and wall as they ramp up is more than enough to deal some major damage. And as soon as you guys start recognizing partial peace control opportunities when fighting, you're gonna start ending your fights way more quicker. Although players back in the day could just easily get away with just making predictable edits, peace control attempts, that stuff won't really fly today. Like, the average player has gotten to a point where they can predict your plays and trade damage with you. Just because you have the opportunity to lay down some extra peace control doesn't always mean that you need to do it. I mean, just like we mentioned in the previous tip, your opponent doesn't need to be fully trapped in order for you to make a play. A lot of the time, it's better to take a shot with the peace control that you have or just hold your position and just wait for them to move and just create another play. All right, here we go. Do you guys want to piece up your opponents like the pros? Make sure to head on over to ProGuys.com where we've got an army of pro coaches ready and waiting to teach you guys everything that you need to know about Fortnite so that you can improve fast.
All right, so if you watch your fair share of professional players gameplay, you've definitely heard them say they're getting in. This means exactly what it sounds like. They're doing whatever they can to enter the opponent's box to quickly eliminate them. This is usually done when the opponent is on extremely low HP and can be finished off easily. Although this type of play does work in select situations, you shouldn't be doing this every time you lay down peace control. You know, we often see players claim some peace control around their opponent and get in their face instead of just playing from outside of the box. Say you manage to replace an opponent's wall. Instead of just editing and running in their face, like you should instead place a cone inside their box and just take a shot from the outside to keep yourself safe. If you guys have seen our videos in the past, you may remember us talking about counter piece control. You know, counter piece control is basically the pieces that you place to prevent your opponent from placing them in the future. Say you're about to go for a wall replace on an opponent. So instead of just going for the wall, you first place a cone or two in front of you next to the wall that you're gonna be taking. This is gonna prevent the opponent from boxing you as you make your play and will also provide some protection for yourself in case you need to escape. You know, counter piece control isn't limited to just this scenario either. Like anytime you see a potential piece that could aid you in your fight, you should probably claim it before your opponent can. All right, so the next mistake that we've been seeing players make is similar to being too predictable. This is editing into players who are just spraying and just have their shotgun ready, especially with how powerful the SMGs are in the current meta. A player who is ready and waiting to be edited on with their weapon out can get you instantly eliminated. Like, instead of just editing right into the player with the hopes of out damaging them, take a moment to pause and just reassess the situation or just wait for them to finish spraying. You know, just like we mentioned earlier, you know, just because you have the opportunity to go for a peace control play doesn't mean that you need to take it. Like, do your best to recognize these dangerous situations and hold yourself back from going for the play you originally had in mind. You know, with the whole goal of peace control being to give yourself the advantage in a fight, you don't want to use wide open edits that will give your opponent the chance to outtrade you. You know, we've all been in that situation where we've, you know, slickly pieced our opponent up only to get eliminated when going for the shot. So to avoid this, guys, you need to prioritize right hand angles and window edits when going for peace control plays to avoid taking any serious damage. You know, oftentimes you're going to see players use wide open edits to go for a shot after applying peace control. Unless your opponent is just extremely low in HP and can be killed quickly, you should always look for an edit that's going to give a little to no angle for your opponent to shoot you. <laughs> All right, guys, so the last mistake that we got for you guys in today's video is not practicing peace control scenarios. Like many players seem to think that playing arena and creative fights is just enough to improve. While this definitely does help, nothing compares to practicing specific peace control scenarios in creative maps. And so we've been loving this peace control map from Don Wozy, man. This map has a handful of realistic scenarios that's gonna help you recognize peace control opportunities in real fights and should definitely be added into your training routine regardless of your current skill level. Bunch of summer, that's gonna be it for today's video. Make sure to connect with me on my Instagram at your motivation guy. Hope you guys love the video. Subscribe to the channel. You know, whether you like it or not, man, peace control is and will continue to be one of the biggest skill gaps in the game. And so consider each of the peace control mistakes we covered in today's video and make some adjustments to your gameplay. All right, guys, keep grinding. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.